Hi, I'm Wave from CBAM Vapor, and today we're going to be covering the Clapton and Fuse Clapton variant. Starting from here on out, you're going to be wanting swivels. These are just some fishing swivels I picked up at a local brick and mortar. Uh, you can order more specialized ones and higher end ones, obviously, but these work fine for me. Back to the normal materials, we'll be using uh, flush cuts, angled tweezers, ceramic tweezers, a coil jig, and we're going to be using four strands of wire here because we're going to be combining the two types of coils at the end. The wires I have are 26 gauge and 38 for the Clapton and 28 and 40 gauge for the Fuse Clapton. These coils are very similarly made, so we're just going to go ahead and play these side by side as much as we can. First, we're just going to be pulling out our length of wire. Whatever you pull for the single uh, Clapton, we're going to be using double for the Fuse Clapton. When inserting it into the swivels, I like to just kind of leave a little bit through with a single core and twist it around. And with fused, I like to insert it all the way until it's about the half point and then fold it over, give it a little tug to kind of tighten it up. When inserting it into your chuck, it's a good idea to make sure that it is as centered as you can possibly get it. This cuts down on wobble and just makes the entire process much easier. Now inserting the fuse wire, I like to insert it into the chuck with the core, but I do have friends and other people who, uh, kind of leave the core leg that you insert into the check pretty long and then they anchor the fuse wire to that. I don't like doing it, but if you find it easier, go ahead. When you start fusing your Clapton, just take a slow build up to a speed you're comfortable with. There's no point in going full force and having to backtrack and do it again. And keep in mind that it's fine. Like if you do start overlapping, it's fine to back off a bit, you know, reset yourself back to, you know, the last point it was good and start over again. That's fine. It won't mess up the coil in any way. While you're actually claptoning, uh, it's important to kind of keep as close to a 90 degree angle as you can traveling with uh, the direction that you've decided to go. So uh, if your drill is on the left, you go left or right. So try to keep steady at a 90 degree angle. Um, you're okay to fall back a little bit, but uh, the window that you can do that becomes less and less the lower and lower the gauges you're working with. So with 40 gauge, for example, it's important to stay as close as you can manage to a perfect 90 degrees. Here you can get a much better look at what I'm doing. Uh, it's a bit awkward on camera, but uh, during the, the slide bites, you can kind of see what I'm doing anyway, the angle I'm keeping. I have a close-up of my swivel here, and as you can see, it's not really moving all that much. Ideally, you want to pull the drill and the uh, swivel taut, but not tight enough to actually bind the swivel. Uh, it's a bit of a balancing act, but when it stops shaking around on you, but isn't really kicking up a huge fuss, like it can shake a little bit, but as long as it's mostly stable, you're fine. Now that we're approaching the end, we'll go ahead and we'll slow it down and you can snip the fuse wire and then we'll cut the cores from the swivel. Now with the fuse clapped in, if it twisted over on itself, you can just go ahead, use a pair of pliers or ceramic tweezers, hold one end tight while keeping the other one still in the drill and you can uh, twist it uh, backwards and that'll allow you to untwist it. Uh, keep tight tension and if, you know, just back and forth until it gets more or less straight and you can more or less be okay with it there. Another method is to, while wrapping, just force it flat. Uh, however, that's slightly more difficult. So what we're going to be doing today is parallel wrapping uh, the two types of wires. First, I'm going to use my Fuse Clapton. I'm going to do a couple wraps. And then when it comes time, I'm going to grab my Clapton. I'm, this time I'm going to wrap on the outside for each one. You don't have to. You can have it the exact same amount of wraps. You can have one less. So it's like one core, one coil is just inside the other one. But I'm going to be wrapping outside and uh, I'm kind of forcing it in between. This doesn't work with all types of coils or all types of parallel wraps, but in this case it works fine and this will work great for like round wire, twist wire as well. Some pros and cons for the Clapton and Fuse Clapton. Uh, the pros would be that there's a much better flavor compared to like round wire and even twisted wire. There's much more crevices and a lot more surface area, which also leads to more clouds. It's the most simple complex build that we'll be doing. Uh, it has many, many uses. It is a very recurring concept, like claptoning itself is utilized in so many builds, it's not funny. They're very long lasting coils, you don't need to replace them very often, and they're a bit warmer than your round coil, so if you like a warmer vape, these are great for it. Uh, everything I said about this also applies to the Fuse Clapton, but the Fuse Clapton is again, slightly warmer, slightly uh, better flavors, slightly better clouds for surface area and so on. The only real con with this build, in my opinion, is that it requires more things. You need a core wire and a fuse wire, not just one. And you need swivels, you're going to want to drill. I've seen people who did this by hand. Those people are maniacs, so don't be that guy. 
Same advice for before when installing dual coils, make sure they're balanced, even, whatever else. Uh, with parallel wraps, they might fall apart from each other, uh, especially if one of them is more springy than the other. And during tuning, you can just kind of squeeze them together, heat them up, and then let go when they're cooled down, and they should kind of slowly form closer together. And then as before as well, we're just going to go ahead and tweak these coils so they're glowing from the inside out. And I got a nice glow shot forward too. Make sure while you're fusing you keep a comfortable tension on uh, this, the spool that you're holding. That's how I'm comfortable doing it. Some people like lay it into a bucket and kind of just guide the wire with their fingers. I like holding the spool. So make sure that like you're applying enough tension that again it's taut and it's not moving around a lot. But you also don't want to bind it up and you don't want uh, the wire to catch on the little notch in your spool. I've heard that some people like to picture the 90 degree angle if they can't really see what they're doing. I personally go off just the, the glare from the light to kind of keep track of where I am on the wire and uh, what angle I'm holding. There are times where if you're not uh, holding it tight enough at the end of the coil, you can kind of grab the fuse wire like on the finished wire and kind of wiggle it around. If that's the case, then you can just hold on to that fuse with your bare hands uh, and spin your drill for a couple seconds extra and it should help even that out. Thank you again to everyone who submitted photos. If you guys would like to, you can submit photos to my uh, email at that's.a.rap.vape at gmail.com and I'll go through them before the video releases when I'm finishing up editing and I'll add them all in. Make sure to check out my Instagram at cboundvapor. Credits to everyone on the screen and uh, yeah, that's a wrap.